give your attending spec either this year or next year. What is that? <laughs> if you have to ask, then it's not you. But yeah, so if it's your chemistry major is planning to take spectroscopy. Um, we want to try to encourage you to take it this spring, even though we are offering it next fall, um, because due to the number of courses we have to teach next fall, um, we can't increase the number of lab sections beyond two, um, which means that class is going to be capped at 20. Um, and it won't be offered for another two years because it's going to be back into the alternating schedule again, which means we need to be able to get all of the rising juniors, all those sophomores, who need that class into it next fall. So if you're a junior now and you need spec, please take it this spring because this spring we have more room in the labs than the next fall. Okay. And please pass that message around because um, I'm not sure everybody's connecting that. Okay. Review. So, what of the following kind of acids where would have the highest melting point? on C3 and glycerol. And remember, we number that based on prochiral position. So if I draw the whole thing out, maybe there's one fatty acid. 
stereo television room. Do they pretend Fisher projection is not done correctly? Does it make any noise? But um, I'm going to draw it going the other direction. So that would be adding us into two. <coughs> And then from the last one, there's phosphate. That's attached to that next group. Okay, so that is my glycerol phosphate. drawn as a little cartoon version where this is a, a polar head group. Receive one position is usually 
saturated. So it's a saturated fatty acid. Um, your C2 position is usually unsaturated. Lots and lots of examples out there, and they tend to be named based on what ester they cut. So the phospholipase <coughs> A2 cuts the ester uh, link at C2. Phospholipase the ester link at C1. Also like a C has the phosphate ester. can be hydrolyzed pretty easily. Um, if you stick it in a strong base, you will quantify it and you will cut it. Um, but there are also enzymes out there that are made for cutting um, ester linkages. So there's my A1 cuts uh, the C1 fatty acid off. Um, my A2, um, which is not on here, but it cuts the fatty acid to position off. Um, and then possibly 
they see between the phosphate and glycerol and then D between the phosphate and foreign alcohol. Um, fossil lipases, one place you find them is in snake venoms. Um, so there, there's a lot of enzymes in snake venoms, um, including nucleases to cut up nucleic acids. Um, but there are also these fossil lipases that, that basically destroy your own cell membranes, um, breaks up the cells and releases those cell components. Um, and the reason uh, you see a lot of um, just cellular damage on the side of a bite mark from a, from a poisonous snake is due to the action of phospho like this. you have two fatty acid tails, two fatty things, you make great lipid bilayers, and that's what you need for cell membrane. Um, if you have one fatty acid, then um, you're looking at something that resembles soap or detergents, and those do not make lipid bilayers. They're going to destroy lipid bilayers. Um, so, again, yeah, that's why it kind of causes a lot of damage. Can you move it up, please? Yeah. You do find them in membranes. It's not really clear what they do, for sure, but one thought is that it might be a, a free radical spectrum. But it has the same structure. Um, so saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acid. Um, uh, but this is an ether, so I was like this in my curve now, right there. So it's an ether because it's the master. Okay. And that's all I'm going to say about this. Because it was unknown. very unknown and yeah. mysterious. It's a mystery, right? <laughs> I guess the Sphinx is less mysterious. Who built it? Why? Um, <laughs> so that's, that's all the symbol of this stuff.
There's lots of different types up there. Um, it may contain a fatty acid. Again, this is the polar head, and then these are fatty tails. So it resembles the possible glycerides that we just did, um, but rather than two fatty acid tails, um, one is the fatty acid, and one is the single sign.
a few definitions. A single lipid and a fatty acid only in no other groups is called a ceramide. Distinguishes them from, um, say, a, a single liquid that has a carbohydrate. Now these are found mostly in nerve cell membranes, nerve cell membranes. And your book has a few examples. Uh, single myelin. It has a single lipid, and it's the most common one if you're going to find it in your cell membranes. Um, and this is what makes up your myelin sheet. This one happens to be a, a glyco stingo sign, so that tells me that there's a carbohydrate in there. Um, that's another common one to find in the cells. Um, and now we're looking at more central nervous system. Um, ganglia size, the record goes before. Um, these are also glyco. Just examples. I'm not concerned that you know what all the different single lipids are and what all the functions are. That's, that's just not um, worth our time. Uh, but you should be able to recognize them based on the, the single sign backbone structure. So my single sign is down here. There's my little fatty acid that is attached. And then uh, here's the ganglia side. And we've got not just one sugar, we've got a little oligosaccharide that's attached to this one. Most abundant is where that from the reading? Cholesterol. Cholesterol is our favorite steroid. And it gets a bad rep. Um, we're gonna talk more about cholesterol 
on Monday, but um, uh, all other steroid hormones are made from cholesterol. Um, so even though we worry about our cholesterol levels, you've got to have it in your diet. If you don't have it in your diet, then you're going to synthesize it and make it yourself. Um, because you need it for all the other uh, steroid hormones in your body. And you need it in order for your cell membrane to work the way it's what food is it really have in there? I, well, mostly it's going to be in anything that is animal uh, in nature. You don't see cholesterol in plant cells <coughs> at all. So, but since it's in every single cell membrane, um, mm. anything that you're eating that is animal, um, yes, red meats are high, yes, eggs are high. Um, they are So most abundant, um, all other uh, uh, steroids are synthesized from it. And it's also, um, oh, again, cholesterol. Also is a major component of some membranes and some things. several types of steroid hormones and they fall into a few different classes. Um, first one would be corticoids. Um, so for example, cortisol falls into this category. Um, this is going to regulate metabolism. Um, it's also involved in inflammatory response, which is why you put your cortisol creams on your itchy spots. sex steroid hormones. Um, so our examples there are, are um, estrogens and androgens. Yeah, it includes testosterone and estradiol. Um, and so this is going to be uh, uh, sexual development.
cholesterol and then just have other attachments. essential vitamins that you do have to have in your diet because you can't make them yourselves. And there are non-essential ones that you can synthesize yourself if you've got the right um, uh, starting materials for it. Um, some examples of fatty things. Um, vitamin D. Where do you get vitamin D? Sun. No. <laughs> um, it's important regulation of calcium and metabolism. We need calcium for a lot of different things. Just one of which is bone growth. But um, vitamin D is important in um, <coughs> using the calcium. And again, it's going to be working as a, a cofactor. Uh, vitamin K. Especially, right. So this is going to, uh, this is your beta carotene. Yep. Right, they're going to get other carrots. <laughs> and they're good for your eye. For your eye. Because we, it's, it's the retinol. It's the, it's the, we need for your eye receptors. So they go into our 
Messengers like steroids. So um, your, your steroids are made in lands and then they're sent out into the bloodstream and then they act on something far away from where they were produced. Um, prostaglandins are generated locally um, at the site that they're needed. Um, they show up in all sorts of things. Um, they're, they're released response.
and then we stick them in things like cosmetics. So if you want your, your mascara to be waterproof, then um, you put a little wax in there. Uh, or your lipstick. It's wax in it. um, for, yeah, animals, I suppose, the uh, waterfowl, their feathers tend to be coating in waxes, um, as opposed to birds and not water birds. Um, uh, plants, when you look at leaves, they frequently, depending on the type of plant, they frequently have a thick waxy coating um, on top, and so it's protected. In some cases, to keep the water in, um, as it's much as the water will go off. So far, what classes of lipids have always had esters with the other in this? Sphingo lipids. Yeah, so sphingo lipids are saponable. and single of this form bilayers. Okay, so the color 
Democrats are pointed out, all the tails are pointing in. Um, cell membranes are uh, kind of fully enclosed spheres of bilayers. So your, your cell membrane is a lipid bilayer. resembles a, a cell membrane in that it is it is going to be spherical and it's, it's a bilayer, um, but it's not a cell membrane because it's not a cell. It's just a little compartment um, that holds water on the inside. Um, I don't know if I can draw that. I put lots of space between my legs. Um, so that's kind of Um, when we start talking about transport across cell membranes, we're going to look at experiments that are done in liposomes um, because it's much easier to, to work with your little artificial um, cell-like thing than it is to work with the actual 